Should a school-aged girl or a grown woman be forced to give up her privacy in a locker room because a biological man identifying as a woman wants to change there? Should a shelter serving women who have survived rape, sex trafficking, and domestic violence be forced to allow biological men to sleep side by side with these women? Should faith-based adoption providers be shut down for following their conviction that the best environment for each child includes a mother and a father in a committed and stable marriage? Should a biological male who believes he is female be allowed to compete against women and girls in female sports, depriving female athletes of a level playing field and countless opportunities to win and even earn college scholarships? According to the so-called Equality Act, a priority for Democrats, including President Biden, The answer to all these questions is yes. Despite its appealing name, the Equality Act poses an unprecedented threat to women, children, free speech, and religious freedom. At its core, the act ignores what science tells us about the differences between men and women, leaving women and girls to pay the price in shelters, locker rooms, and on the field of play. The same goes for a similar bill dubbed Fairness for All, which proposes meager and likely temporary carve-outs for religious groups. In short, the Equality Act doesn't offer equality. It creates victims. How would the Equality Act do this? By adding gender identity and sexual orientation to federal laws like the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the act seeks to impose the government's views about marriage, sex, and what it means to be male and female on the entire nation. For starters, the Equality Act would mandate that men who identify as women be allowed to compete for spots on female sports teams, for women's scholarships, and for other academic and sports-related opportunities designed specifically for women. Female athletes like Selena Soul, Chelsea Mitchell, and Alana Smith know this firsthand. They've all become victims of local policies similar to the Equality Act that force them to compete against biological males in competitive track meets. The results are predictable. Over a three-year period, high school girls in Connecticut missed out on 15 titles and 85 opportunities to advance to the next level of competition. With the Equality Act, female athletes across the country will pay the price for ignoring the meaningful biological differences between men and women. Women competing against similarly gifted and trained males know the outcome of the race before it even starts. In one year, 275 high school boys ran faster times than the lifetime best of world champion sprinter Allison Felix. That's hardly equality. Rather, it's discrimination against women and girls. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The Equality Act also poses a major threat to the very existence of religious organizations like schools, charities, and even churches. For many Americans, their faith inspires them to act for the good of their neighbors and for the flourishing of society. Their faith also requires them to abide by its teachings regarding marriage, sex, and what it means to be male and female. But the Equality Act directly threatens the ability of religious organizations to serve others according to the beliefs that inspire them. The act would force faith-based adoption providers, for example, to violate their core beliefs by placing children in homes without a mother and a father. Worse, the act could forbid nearly every religious school, charity, and church from hiring staff and leaders that share their religious views, if those views diverge from the new government orthodoxy. Under the Equality Act regime, the federal government may have more say over the next pastor of your church than your congregation, denomination, or diocese. And that means a total abandonment of the God-given freedoms of speech, religious exercise, and of assembly that America's founders set out to protect in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. The act's devastating effects also extend to the marketplace. Just ask creative professionals like Jack Phillips or Baronel Stutzman. Both serve everyone, but cannot express all messages or participate in every event through their art. And when they politely decline to create art celebrating same-sex wedding ceremonies, their home states of Colorado and Washington hounded them with years of litigation under laws similar to the Equality Act. The Equality Act could multiply situations like these, imposing a nationwide version of the freedom-crushing state laws that harm people like Jack and Baronel. The freedom to live peaceably according to our beliefs is a bedrock of free society, resting on our human dignity and codified by the First Amendment. 
The Equality Act imposes a belief system about marriage and human sexuality on everyone and treats reasonable people who disagree with the government's views based on decent and honorable grounds as hostile and unfit to participate in the marketplace. Our nation can and must do better.